Hi, this is Robert. I haven't talked to you in a while, and I wanted to give you an update on the Nelson Pass F6 amplifier. It's poking along, still giving me a few issues I need to deal with. But I have learned how to bias it. Uh, if you look here, the meter on the left is the offset. Meter on the right is the bias current. I found the third meter uh, was just more confusing than anything. It works on a fully complementary amplifier, but not on a quasi-complementary amplifier like the uh, F6 is. The deal is on an F6, these two de output devices are identical, and the circuit set up accordingly. If you notice... The top device, Q1, has its drain on the plus 23 volt supply. The bottom device, Q2, has its drain on the output. So you get radically different voltages when you are measuring. And it took me actually disassembling the amplifier and comparing the boards in the amplifier to the boards to my uh, additional boards I made up to see whether there was anything wrong. In the course of that, I addressed the uh, wires from the power supply to the amplifier boards far too short, and uh, it didn't give me much service leeway, so I ended up uh, lengthening this one back up. So anyway, uh, as you can see, uh, we've got a, a stable offset and bias happening. One other thing is I have 5.6 volt zeners here for uh, Z1 and Z2 as opposed to the 5.1 shown in the diagram here. Also, uh, when you buy the kits from DIY Audio, you'll notice, whoops, you'll notice that they come with zeners matched for the uh, output devices. And I would recommend you do that. I just went with some uh, one watt zeners that I had, assuming that since it was in the middle of the suggested range, it would work fine. And it works okay, but it uh, what I found is, what was really confusing me previously is that even in the middle of its range, nothing's really getting biased on yet. It turned out to be that I had to crank the bias pot quite a ways, almost to uh, the end of its range, before it would start responding and showing bias on that channel. So there's actually nothing really wrong with either channel and cranking on it, I was able to get the bias within range. Now this can be adjusted further up. If I want to, um, right now I'm only at uh, 500 millivolts, and they say it should be up at 700, which I'm not sure whether that's recommended, because I was getting the out put devices were fairly hot at that point. They were up in the 40 degree range. That's 40 degrees C. Anyway, I found that I was able to crank it up, yes, all the way up to six, 700 uh, millivolts if I wanted. I've backed it down to 500 for my initial tests here, and the offset zeroed right up, so I'm not too worried. One thing that does concern me, I don't know if you can see it, but the dim bulb is dimly on. I am drawing basically an amp of current on each channel, so I don't know whether that's what's causing the uh, dim bulb to come on. I can't find any hot spots. I've been going through the rectifiers, and most of them read about 30 degrees C. One thing that does measure hot is this first thermistor for the AC. And I'm not sure whether that's because it's faulty or whether it's just dealing with the constant current of the amplifier channels. But I can't see any other probable cause for it. 
that and I don't know if you can hear there is a slight hum in the amplifier and it's audible I have been playing it on my uh, crappy little Sony speakers you see over there it plays fine sounds okay but I'll definitely going to change out that first thermistor see if that makes a difference I'm hoping that it's just that that somehow it's not up to snuff but so far nothing's exploded in the puff of smoke and it is functioning it's not functioning 100 percent how i'd like now i did remove the lines to the balanced input the bridging input just uh, to see if that was perhaps causing any additional hum and it doesn't appear to be so anyway there's more poking and prodding to be done in the meantime i did get some uh, new speaker kits these are the swans hi-vi 3.1 speakers they look amazingly like the uh, wharfdale evo speakers to the point where i'm going is it the same drivers it looks like the exact same design these have very high ratings from other people if you check youtube so i'm curious how they'll sound the initial idea was to get some surround speakers or at least some speakers that would uh, replace my uh, little Sony's there which are disposable and I wouldn't mind if anything happens to them but they they are kind of miserable to listen to they got glued together it's a, an amazingly sophisticated kit for uh, $300 actually I think it's $290 Probably one reason the amplifier is working is I use psychological warfare on it. Assemble the uh, crossovers for the Swans speakers right in front of it. So it felt jealous and had to work then. That's about where I am. There needs to be more done on this to see uh, whether it is in fact behaving well. I don't recall seeing this dim glow on the dim bulb with the f5 which being more powerful i would think i would have so that, that does concern me that something odd is going on here we'll poke around i'm going to still leave it open like i said i'll start with the thermistor it's the hottest thing on the amplifier and we'll go from there anyway i wanted to give you guys an update it hasn't exploded yet hasn't killed me uh, and we're getting very close. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy this kind of boring crap. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.